I'm Robert Cavuto, and today on Sonic Perspectives, we are speaking with singer and songwriter Ash Costello of the band New Year's Day to discuss the release of their new album, Half Black Heart, which came out March 1st. Welcome, and thank you so much for your time today. It's a pleasure. Hi, do you want to meet my puppy? Sure. This is Zero. <laughs> oh, he's cute. Isn't he cute? He's a bit rambunctious. He's very we're cute. Getting, we're getting used to our new surroundings here, and he's wanting to chew on everything. Oh. Well, he, he makes a good addition to the interview. So maybe I could ask him. A <laughs> you could say it. You could say. <laughs> so since 2005, um, you've been the constant voice of the band for, I guess, almost 20 years now. The sound is not mellowing, but in, in fact, it's getting heavier, more fierce. Um, yeah. what, how do you keep that up and what do you attribute that to? Um, you know, a lot of people say, oh, you sound so different than when you started. It's like, who would who looks the same, likes the same thing, sounds the same that they did 20 years ago? You know, like nobody. So I'll never understand why when a band's been around for a long time, people kind of expect the band to have the same sound. It's like, right. who does that? So, well, I mean, as I grew up, I mean, when I started the band, I was into like pop punk and ska. And, you know, so of course the music reflected what I was into at the time. And then as I started discovering my love for heavy music and my own personal, like, preference in music evolved, so did the music I was writing. So, you know, to me, that just makes sense. Right. I think the album is great. And I really, I'm really enjoying it. So, and I've been listening to it pretty much solid for the last week. Um, oh, you're so sweet. Thank you. I'm curious to know what inspired you, you hinted upon it, but what inspired you lyrically for writing then and what inspires you now? You know, I've always kind of been inspired by when I needed to get words out of my head. And so in that way, music, song, songwriting and music has always been like a therapy to me. Yeah. With that being said, sadly, you know, when do we need the most therapy? When do we need that kind of outlet is when we're upset? Yeah. So the music always pours out when I'm upset. Oh, wow. So that's why our music kind of always has that theme. You know, I've tried to write happy songs and they still come out sounding <laughs> upset. So... <laughs> That's an interesting point. You know, I've asked other people that too in the past. Is it easier to write a happy song or a sad song or an angry song? So you fall in more of the the sad and the angry song, right? Yeah. I mean, we our, our earlier stuff was way more angry. I mean, I was just reminiscing about the first song we ever wrote as a band. It was called Ready and Misfire. And the lyrics are kind of really mean. <laughs> so, so I just, I guess I've always just, um, before I realized it, you know, used writing my words on paper as therapy. Yeah. What was your headspace you were in? Were you going through something on this album or do you do you stockpile lyrics and song ideas based upon an emotional state of mind that you're in at one time or another? A little both. Yeah. You know, um, I am always, I, I've always been a creative person as far back as I can remember. So I'm always thinking in terms of art. And if something comes to mind, I always write it down on my phone. So I do have a bit of a stockpile. And then, you know, I've also sat down and gone, how do I feel right now? Songs like Fearless and um, Unbreak My Heart were just like in the moment. That's pretty cool. You know, and Hurts Like Hell was came out, I think, August 20, 2022, right? Yeah. So how long has the album been really done? We started writing songs back in 2020. Mm hmm and, um, you know, with COVID, we we had the luxury of just taking our time. Yeah. So we we knew we weren't going to put a record out into the world, you know, was back in fully working order. We just, so we just kind of used that to our advantage to really be picky about the songs we wanted to go with. And um, so the reason why Hurts Like Hell came out so much sooner than the album is because when we wrote Hurts Like Hell, we were like, hey, the world's open the song is great. Like, let's just put it out there and see what happens. And then we'll finish writing the record. Right. And that's, was the album done or were you just doing a song at a time, so to speak? Because a lot of bands do like the guitar for all the songs, the drums for all the songs. Then the person goes in and do the vocals. Were you completing song, song, song? Mm -mm. No, we, we did, we let songs come naturally as they wanted to come. Right. And I kept telling everybody like, in, in in the past, everyone else told me when a New Year's Day record was done. And I said, this time we're going to let the record tell us when it's done. 
And um, I was really picky. I mean, there were times the label was like, record's done. I was like, no, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. Not even close. So, and then, you know, I went through a lot of life, too, that kind of held up the record. Like, the record was supposed to come out last year. And then, you know, I had a, I had a pretty tough summer of 2023. So we had to put everything on hold until, you know, the following year. Because we had to, I had to kind of go through some life stuff. And then, um, so, I mean, cause people were like, I, you know, they forget that we're humans and we're not only put here to make records, you know, there's, there's life that's happening all around us all the time. And so, um, like, for example, we had to drop off all of our festivals in 2023 and this year they're like, I don't trust New Year's Day is actually going to show up. It's like, damn guys, like, let me live some life. <laughs> it won't Please. work out. Just give me a little space. It's going to be yeah. all right. Right. You yeah. Know, how many songs did you write? And when do you know the out al- you have the right? I think it was 12, 11, 12 songs on the album. Twelve, I think. Yeah. I think I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> how do you know? I mean, how many did you write for to get to those twelve? There's probably about another ten that are on the cutting room floor. How far in complete? Some, um, some of them were were completed but they just didn't they just didn't feel right like they they matched you know and so and sometimes it's a bummer because you really try and want to make that like square fit into the circle and it just doesn't you know and you have to kind of just know it's time to let it go yeah I get it you know um and I was wondering like you released I think five singles since the first one in 2022 yeah Yeah. Um, I have to wonder, like, is that a strategy? Is that like a new strategy that you, you're you constantly keeping the fans engaged and interested while you're, you know, making the album? I think it's a new strategy. I mean, I feel like the record industry is just trying to keep up. It's like trying to swim upstream to catch up to the new trends of how mm-hmm. things are evolving. And I think that was kind of the trend this year but who knows I don't think that's the new way of doing things I think that's just everyone's just trying to figure out how to do it because people don't do you know back back in the day when I was buying CDs it was like one or two singles were released and then the album came out right you know you didn't get to hear the the rest of the album you had to buy it and hope you liked it you know and um so I think everyone's just trying to figure out in this this world now where you can um you know, just pick and choose what songs you want to buy from the album and you don't even have to buy the whole album. And what, you know, will there even be albums in the future? You know, we've been talking about that because we spend all this time making 12 songs and half of them never see the light of day. So it's like everyone's trying to figure out what the future is looking like in that sense. That's interesting. I'm I'm old school. I do like a complete album. I I do like the journey it takes you from beginning to end. So I'm not a single guy, you know, I'm kind of, I want to hear the whole body. Oh, of yeah. I love that. Like I, one of my biggest inspirations growing up was no doubt. And with every new record came a new phase, a new look, right. a new attitude, a new style they brought. And you kind of, you know, were enveloped in this world that they created per each album. And if you don't have albums anymore, you just have singles. You lose that. Right. Right. I think of like, you know, when Manson came out with mechanical animals, it was like a whole new look and a whole new, and there's still bands doing that. Like bands like ghosts do that incredibly well. And, and um, so I think it still exists, but just not like how it used to. Yeah. I, I have great memories of like listening to Def Leppard's album, driving down to the shore, you know, and that's a snapshot in time of just, you know, yeah. heading down to the shore oh, yeah. with guys and trying to meet girls and, you know, having a great time. And yeah. And that I think I, I reminisce on that with a lot of albums, part of my life. You know, where I was I, what was I doing, and what songs did I enjoy off of this album? So that's that's really important me to too. me. Me too. And we try to do that, you know, but it's getting harder and harder for sure. Yes. I, I one of my favorite songs on the album was Enemy. Oh wow. Yeah. I think it's cool. powerful. It really shows your voice as far as throttling from the clean vocals to the screams. Uh, tell me about wow. your Tell me about your approach for singing like that. Um, confidence. That's that's the key in everything, and that takes time, you know. And um, I, I've heard a lot of I've I've read a lot of comments about how different my voice sounds on this record, and I just felt, you know, as you grow as an artist and you discover things about your voice as you move along, you know, you work with different producers who who teach you what you didn't know, or like the Haxons taught me so much about my voice I never knew was possible. And um, it's just all experimentation and I have a really good support system of people pushing me, you know, so I'm very lucky in that way. And um, 
just confidence. Yeah. I, I was telling you, I was telling you earlier, I know you from the Haxtons and then I'm, I, I'm familiar with that. And then I've gone into new year's day and now I'm going backwards into new year's day catalog. But I hear you and the Haxtons have the very, very same voice. Yes. Right. So I haven't got delved into earlier stuff to see how you've changed, but I know you from that and I hear you singing. That's you. I, I don't know how yeah. to explain it. But. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Haxtons, I get to be a little bit more, um, sometimes a little bit more cutesy and sometimes a little bit more re like Aretha Franklin with like more soul than, right. um, then New Year's Day is a bit more styl stylized and obviously more screaming and a bit heavier. So but I, I like that I get to dabble in both worlds. Yeah. Now, uh, we talked a little bit about this. There's a lot of anger, pain on this album. Um, and it sounds like a very personal album you, from what you've <laughs> described in 2023 was there were some, you know, personal challenges going on. Yeah. That's 100% reflected in the lyrics, would you say? Yo, yes. Yeah. Yes, of course pretty good it's it's a fierce album so i really did like it from that perspective you. and you got and you reunited with uh some members of the original members of the band how did that yes. you reunited so, with brandon wolf the, and the wolf uh, brothers yeah. <laughs> they're brothers I, a lot of people don't know that because jeremy goes by um yeah a, uh, valentine but they're they're brothers and they're so talented yeah it's unreal but you know um when they joined the band, what, eight or nine years ago, they um, they were obviously younger. And touring, we toured a lot back then. Like, we toured a grueling schedule. And touring isn't for everybody. Uh, and all the, not all the time. Like, even I go through phases where I'm like, I don't want to do this. Yeah. And um, they just, they weren't feeling like they wanted to be gone anymore. They, you know, they have wives. And they wanted to um, stay at home and learn production. They started their production company. And once... Once they kind of got settled um, and maybe a little bit older or their goals changed a little bit, we reconnected and they reached out and told told us they were interested in rejoining. And of course, we were so thrilled to have them back. I, I thought I read too, Jeremy has been behind the scenes a little bit with writing. Is that accurate? Yeah. Yeah. Jeremy never really left the studio with us. So he helped okay. write our previous album, Unbreakable, and he was in the studio with me writing... Um, have black heart even before he had rejoined so you know it's you know it's the internet the internet rumors i love since i feel like since i'm a female leader of this band it's always the automatic go-to of like oh another band member they must hate ashley or ashley's such a diva or whatever but little do they know like we are very 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 close with all of our previous members minus one but all of our previous are still very close to us and yeah. we keep in contact with them all the time you know, I can relate to their, you know, their idea as you get older. When you were younger, you have no problem jumping into a van with, you know, one pair of jeans and you don't care. You, you're just going to have a great time. But as you get older, you're like, man, I don't want to, I don't want to do that. That's a pain in the ass unless you're going to like five star, you know? Yeah, it's definitely, a, it's a tough life. It really is a hard life. And, you know, bands show the fun, the fun parts and it, it right. all looks exciting and traveling and all the fun, crazy stuff you get to do. But it is a, a physical toll an emotional toll a mental toll and it's it's hard yeah i'm a homebody lately so it's it's like uh i'm always a homebody so yeah, it's I don't, tough for well, me. my wife and my daughter they want to go on vacation they want to go, go to europe it's like why don't we just go to the jersey shore and hang out <laughs> vacation stay home yeah that, stay that's me that's me it's like yeah, yeah I, I like all my stuff with my toys i want to be able to touch you. it you know um, you know, you you touched upon a question I was going to ask. You know, there have been a lot of musicians that have come and gone in the band. Um, do you think it's a blessing and a curse? Because, you know, it could be a blessing because you have different influences. They take you to a different spot. Sometimes the curse could be a lack of familiarity with the, the key members. What has it been? How do you see it? Um, well, I'm really going to judge it on what we've been through on the past. And I think it's a blessing because we've made so many close friends over the years, you know, um, just off the top of my head, Max, George Ebb and, and Tyler Burgess were both in New Year's Day, um, but got picked up by following in reverse. And now, you know, we get the blessing of watching them play arenas and we, you know, get to congratulate them all the time on their success. And, um, you know, we, we have so many amazing friendships from it. So, 
yeah, I think it's a blessing, but in a way, you know, it's tough when you have to bring a new person in. I don't think we'll ever bring new people in ever again because, um, we're just really close knit now with our, with our lives and ourselves. I, I doubt we'll ever trust new people ever yeah, again, yeah. I can but, see um, so in that way it's a curse, but, um, hopefully that, hopefully that doesn't happen. And a lot of times it's connections too, you know, this, they're, <laughs> And then you could be opening for them. You could, they could be opening for you, whatever the case may be. Oh so, yeah, we've worked, with them. We've, worked with the, we've worked with Falling River since they've joined. And it was like, it was just awesome because we already had close friends in the band yeah. and it was a lot of fun. Now you're starting a tour in May. I'm yeah. going to come and see you May 3rd and Asbury Park at the Stone Pony. So I'm looking forward to awesome. that. What song so, can we expect to hear? Uh, I would imagine maybe the five singles because there's a level of familiarity with it. Some, some of them, yes, some of them. Definitely Vampire. Um, we're going to play So so Sick, uh, Fearless, Have Real Black cool. Car, and a few other surprise ones. Fearless is my second favorite. Awesome. Are you going to bring the stage from Vampire? <laughs> I wish. <laughs> I wish that stage was real. Yeah, Sadly, right. Sadly, it was all, all CG. You know, it looked really good, though, I have to say. For a minute, I, I, I had to go back and watch it again. I was like, wait a minute. I don't think that's real, you know? So it, it was well None done. None of it's real. None of it. The only thing real in it is our bodies. <laughs> yeah. Were you moving up and down on different platforms? Or was mm -hmm. that fake, too? I had to do all kinds of weird stunts that I was not prepared to do, like running on a green treadmill, holding a very heavy sword in platforms, swinging at things that weren't there. You know, it was tough. I, I definitely ate shit a couple times. What about, what about the guys? Were they, um, when they were playing on the stage, was, and they were, parts were going up and down. Were they literally going up and down while you were in one? No, no. That's oh. all CG. It's great. It was a great, it's a great <laughs> video. It's a really entertaining video. That's um, Mateo Sandoval, so talented. Yeah, it's really well done. Um, what's involved in, going back and re-reviewing the older songs when you go on tour do you have to listen to the songs try and get into that back into that mindset of 20 years ago or what was made you no, they're upset? like ingrained in our brains what's that they're like ingrained in our brains yeah yeah we don't it's like second second nature yeah how yeah. Much, are you allowed to change up the set list do you have the capability to do that you know oh like, yeah yeah we, well we um have like set list options so we'll have like option a b c and d because i like to run a system where once once we choose it that's it like we very rarely want to stray from it because we've got like set interludes and different set intros and we add like you know like for example before hurts like hell we've got some clips from the movie the warriors which was what inspired the music video and it's like and if you start switching things up it doesn't make sense anymore yeah so we kind of it, we kind of have to really pre-plan to not change anything, but we have, you know, backups in case we do. Have you ever been in a situation where a song's just, you're going out on tour and a song's just not working? It's oh, yeah. That happened on the last tour. I mean, I love all of our songs, but sometimes it just doesn't translate live like the way you think it's going to. Right. And, um, yeah, that happens all the time. Yeah, I, I do. I go to a lot of concerts. I, forgo I photograph them. And you can just see sometimes the crowd's like going like crazy for one song, and then they just... Yeah, we call those energy sucks. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. We go, that song's an energy suck. Get it out of here. Yep. Now, I love the theatrics. We were talking about the video, and I love the theatrics of the band, the look of the band. Is it possible for theatrical metal to still shock people nowadays? Is it? Is it really um, possible? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Totally. Look at Ghost. It's true. Killing it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it has to be the right brand brand the right band the right message the right look like i think sometimes it can come off a little try hard or maybe a little cheesy but there's a lot of bands doing it incredibly well i think it definitely still has power that's pretty cool you know we were talking um off camera about the accents uh with your partner count d and i saw you guys at the uh, the chance at poughkeepsie with opening yeah. up john five which was a great show you put out an album the dead and the restless and uh, it, there was real no fanfare. There was no promotion. There was no tour. Was that because of what was going on in your life or? Yes, there was a lot going on in both of our lives. Um, you know, Matt's had a, a second baby and I have to tour okay. with New Year's Day. He tours with Rob Zombie and I uh, went through a lot of personal stuff too. And 
you know, we always knew with the Haxons, it was like something we were going to do with passion. And if it went somewhere, it went somewhere. And if it didn't, it didn't. It was more like for our souls, it wasn't really like, you know, of course we wanted to do well, yeah. but we always knew that, you know, the other acts kind of took precedence over what we could do with the Haxons. I thought it was a great album. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. There's more to music coming. That's what that's what uh, Cal told me maybe about a year ago. He said you yeah. also have a cover album too, right? Oh, we've got so much music. We love recording music. So uh, we've got so much music waiting to come out, probably for years worth. Are you think you're going to tour again? Uh, uh, you know, anytime. I would like to. I would like to. Um, but there's some top secret stuff going on behind the scenes that I don't have the liberty to talk about. I mean, awesome stuff um, that, you know, if there's, I'll just say if there's, if there's time, there's time. Okay, good. I, I look forward to it. I, I enjoyed that show. And you were talking about that you're going, um, you're going to be opening up for Motley Crue. I wasn't aware of that. Yes. At, um, gosh, don't, I should have done my research before this, but I, I, there's so many cool festivals coming up. I want to say it's Aftershock. Okay. In Sacramento. Pretty cool. Yeah. We're really excited about that. That'd be fun. I've never seen Motley with John Five. Neither have I. I've I've been a big Motley big Motley fan since like nineteen. Oh yeah, we've we've been uh, fairly close with Motley for a long time. You know, I was Vince Neil's pretend date for their like big announcement of their like final their final tour. Yeah, and um, you know, we've been two degrees of Nikki Six five billion times, and uh, we know a lot of people in that camp. And um, but it's it'll be our first time seeing them with Motley Crue. Oh, that's awesome. Or uh, sorry, John Five. Jump up, yeah. Too Fast for Love is one of the albums that, um, you know, if I had to be stranded somewhere, I would want to take with me because that was such Great. an inspirational album to me, learning how to play guitar and putting together a band that it was really yeah. quite a tremendous album. Great album. Yeah. Well, listen, I want to thank you so much for your time. It was really insightful. Oh, yeah. to you. And I, I look forward to seeing you out in uh, the Stone Pony. Do you know if you're playing hey. the outdoor stage or the little stage inside? Oh, I have no idea. Okay. They have a big, no, I don't stage, know. Well, a big summer stage. And I was wondering, where are you going to be? I just wake up and go to where they point me to go. <laughs> well, there's a great pizza place be right behind the Stone Pony. So if you get a chance. I, yeah, I played the Stone Pony lots of times. Oh, okay. Yeah, definitely have played the Stone Pony over the past 20 years, a dozen plus times. Oh, uh, it's great. Yeah, the, yeah. it's called uh, Porta Porta. Porta. I think it's just called Porta. Porta Pizza. You know I'm going to be there. That's good. Well, thank you so much, Ash. It was really a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you for your time. Yeah. And tell Count I said hello, okay? So he's, a great, he's a great guy. Awesome. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.